What a magical ancient location. This is Darwin of the Northern Territory. It's two and a half thousand kilometres north of where we were last racing 41 days ago down at Tail and Bend. We've added some degrees to the temperature here this weekend. It's much, much warmer than where we were at last time. Jackets and beanies at the bend, just about good enough for singlets, shorts and thongs out there today. It is going to be hot, heavy work with cabin temperatures expected to be between 50 and 60 degrees. Lots of action going on out there at the moment. Looking forward to hearing from plenty more guys on the grid, including Mark Larkham. Thanks, Chad, and I'm down here in the Hino Hub for the race considerations, which is Crompo's little segment. So, big shoes to fill, and there's no way I'm going to do this without my mate Crompo. So, he's right here with us. That's the tattoo that Scafie and I have on our back. Love you, mate. We're missing you. We need you back. But anyway, I'm for the first time ever on my Hino Hub going to press the Crompo button. I've never done it before. There it is. What's in there? All of this pops up. So here's our big ticket issues for the race you need to know. Race 12 in our championship, 38 laps, 110 kilometres, 31 seconds to transit the pit lane. Remember that? That's what it's all going to come down to. In this race today, you've got to do one compulsory pit stop. Don't worry about fuel. It's all about tyres. Two tyres you've got to put on as a minimum. You can do three if you want. You can do four if you want. OK, there's our winners previously. Now... Let's just go in a little bit deeper. What are the big considerations for this weekend or well, today's racing? Hidden Valley, well, there's the circuit. Beautiful circuit. Drivers just love coming up here. It's grippy. It's a bit of a holiday. It's got a great vibe, big crowd. We just love it. But it's defined by this straight that is only surpassed by the Bathurst straight. It's a big one. So the racing's hardcore and into it. But... The big three considerations, Darwin, weather, it's stinking hot. Drivers are going to sweat, they're going to lose fluid, they're going to make mistakes. Tyres hate it, cars hate it, that means good racing. The next one is this, the elephant in the room. We're going to be talking a lot about this, this brand new Dunlop super soft tyre designed specifically to go faster, it's softer, to melt more and make it harder to drive on at the back end of the race. That's going to flush out some strategies. Love that bit, but here's the really cool bit, you know what? We had the start of the season, this guy come out and smoked it. We thought Shane Ben Gisbergen's going to own this season. But since then, you know what? One, two, three, four, five, six race winners in the last six races. Pretty cool. So, what do you reckon, Compo? How would I go? Yeah, thumbs up, he said. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Saw a flurry of activity down here at Shane Van Gisbergen's car on the left front wheel, just a bit abnormal activity ahead of the race, and I thought I'd just wander down and see what was going on. It looks like the front splitter. They've had dramas with this car all weekend with the front splitter, this part of the car flapping when he jumps on the brakes down at turn one, so they fitted a brand new one to the car, and it's what it looks like, it actually hasn't been fitted properly, and it's actually ground up and filed away some fiberglass dust here, so it looked like the team just sort of whipped the wheel off, had a quick look to make sure that was okay. Had a bit of a look at the body language of Shane's race, engineer David Couchy. He doesn't look convinced to me, so this is something to keep an eye on for the start of the race. Will Davison, not ideal that we're starting this far back in the grid, but Hidden Valley is all about the undertake, so can we expect to see you pitting very early? Uh, good, good question. Um, certainly not ideal. Um, no, we've got a quick car. Um, just a really tough set of circumstances this morning that sees us back here 22nd, but you know, with this tyre compound at the moment, there's a big, big question mark over what we can and can't do. So we're going to have to think on the fly a little bit whether we uh, go extreme one way or the other. It's going to be exciting. Enjoy, Will. Okay. It's got a lot of work to do today. Objects in mirror are losing. <laughs> that is awesome. That's clever. <laughs> I'd only be putting that on the guy in the front row, that's for sure. A bit of confidence. There's a bit of swagger about Anton Di Pasquale, and I like that. Oh, I love it too. That is very good. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Can he get back the win that he probably deserved at Tail and Ben when he had those motor dramas late in that race? He did pick up a win on the Sunday there. Ford victorious in all three of those races. How will the new kids go? We've got some drivers who have never been here before. That's one of them right there, Brody Kostecki. They're all hot. They're sitting in their race cars, and they're all ready to go. But now it's time for our national anthem, and this is going to be special. 19-year-old local Darwin musician Phoebe Olivia on the grid.
And here come the helicopters just to really ram home the awesome atmosphere as we get set to go into race 12 of the championship. Well done, Phoebe Olivia, just 19 years of age. Her heart would have been thumping standing out there. Won the grid clears before a supercars race. You really feel the tension go up, and that would have been a special moment for her as the ARH Tigers come in above the sky. They're going to fly over this awesome track. Scafie, this is a place where you've won plenty of races. This is a great circuit. It's just under 2.9K. And it's very, very fast. The big, long straight into Turn 1 characterises it. And the length of Turn 1 is one of the key elements of this track. You're in this corner for 9.4 seconds. And have a look at the drama. 2017, race 11. There's so many cars off the road in the braking area. And then this little roller coaster ride through right and left at Turn 2 through to Turn 4. We have crashed some cars in that section of the racetrack. It's a wild little layout. It's got much more elevation change in that part of the track than you think and it's got a great mix of slow and high speed sections how cool is this flying in formation over the start line right now the arh tiger two-seat attack helicopter and it's part of the australian army as we get set to check out how it's all unfilled so far we'll take you back to yesterday three-day race meeting and it was nick perk at rnj batteries brad jones racing first out of the blocks did a good job didn't they and a high grip surface the way the cars responded is very nice. Wink up was the only guy in the fives yesterday. He topped practice two with a 5.87. They looked dominant at that point. And then Anton Di Pasquale on pole position. What a remarkable job. Three pole positions in a row. His first three poles all together. As Ludo congratulates the young bloke who has been able to stick the car on the front row of the grid alongside Mark Winterbottom felt the whole commentary box shift when these big beasts flew over just then. Just a tick under 30 degrees out there at the moment, but the track, it is hot. 40 degrees cabin temperatures inside the mid-50s. It's going to be hot, sweaty, humid work inside these supercars. Hopefully, for Will Brown's case, they get that cool suit sorted because he'll be struggling by the end of this one. There is no way at a place like this that you can have a cool suit failure. In fact, if the cool suit fails, you're far better off to just not do it. Just take the cool suit off and try to torture through this. There's a lot of chat on the radio as we get set for race 12. Let's take a look at our truck assist starting grid. Anton Di Pasquale on pole position with a 5.29, the fastest lap ever, lining up alongside Mark Winterbottom. Shane Van Gisbergen, the championship leader in three, alongside Scott Pye, who's been very, very fast all weekend. Nick Perkat, we've already covered for you. Fastest in P1, then Wink Up, fastest in P2. They've continued that form on. These two blokes, they've got history. Cam Waters and Chaz Mostert, they are crash magnets for each other. They have been for years. Tim Slade, great job. And Zane Goddard, that would have been a tough lap for him, his first shootout, Gal. Certainly was, did a fantastic job. Macaulay Jones out of grid 12. Fantastic effort from them. Those BJR cars have got speed this weekend on this super soft tyre. Brody Kostecki out of 13. Fabian Coulthard, a great job from the local legends. Commodore, it's a f great to see them making their way up the grid. Kurt Kostecki, a wild card this weekend, 15th. Todd Hazelwood and the beautiful looking Pizza Hut Commodore. That thing looks awesome. And it was a very, very good job. By the time you think about Thomas Randall in the wild card area, to be able to make that announcement through the week that Tickford pick up a fourth car for next year and he will be the driver. Fantastic job. Now, some big names at the back of the field. Will Brown's won, although he's a rookie. James Courtney, a long way back. Will Davison got caught out with that tyre strategy. Jack LeBrock down in 23rd. So there's a lot of those names, especially these two. Andre Heimgartner won at the last race meet. Yeah, Kelly Grove Racing had a really bad first segment of qualifying. Sees them off the back row of the grid. They'll be looking to do something alternative with the strategy get themselves towards the front. Have a look at our Century Batteries race facts. 29 degrees, it might be a bit more than that in the end. 38 laps, 110k, 30, 31 seconds, just a little bit more than that in the end. And there's going to be a lot of strategy applied to when they stop in this race. Chad Nalon's just ducked back out. He did a great job getting us through the national anthem. And... He's going to be in the pit lane for us. Garth Tanner's in here with me now in the com box. Big shout out to Neil Crompton. And we get set now for race 12 of the championship. The Merlin Darwin Triple Crown. The fifth event of our Repco Supercast Championship for 2021. 
Yep. And they just wheel it up. He's going to have to wheel it up further yeah, than that. That's a long yeah. way back. Very conservative for Mark Winterbottom. You can see he's given away half a car length no, there. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Get her up there a bit more, Frosty. But I'm really looking forward to this one, Mark. A great unknown about what they need to do strategy-wise to get the most out of this Dunlop super tyre, super soft tyre, and get to the end and get to the end first. About to get a green flag. And we're getting set in the top Thank end. You. For the first leg of the Merwin, Darwin, Triple Crown. Will Anton be able to get to the first corner first? He wheels it away nicely, but so does Frosty. He missed a gear. Frosty missed a gear. And on the inside comes Van Gisbergen now. That was a beautiful start to begin with, but he wasn't able to continue it on. Shane dives. Anton gone. They've all crashed into each other. Wow, what a start. Wow. It started right at the start. Mark Winterbottom didn't really launch second phase of the start. The car wouldn't go. There he is. He's parked up. He's got caught up in it as well. This will bring the BP Ultimate Safety Car for sure. There's cars everywhere at Turn 1. Shane Van Gisbergen up the inside. Big, big move. And look at the cars we have here. They might even red flag this. This is There's cars everywhere. You can see Anton parked on the outside. Young Todd Hazelwood's parked in there in the Pizza Hut Commodore. There is total chaos. It come from a big dive that Van Gisbergen made, but I thought he got it done. He might have wheeled him a little bit wide, but Scott Pye... We'll pick that up. Certainly we'll here we go on the replay. So here we watch Winterbottom first. Gets going and then it dies. It cuts out. He gets out of the way. And that sort of scrambles the field a little bit. Everyone's like, what's going on here? And the traditional three-wide run down to turn one. But here, you can just see Winterbottom's car doesn't go. So that's really weird, isn't it? Because I thought he missed a gear. It looked like a missed gear to begin with. But he's reported back now. Here's Van Gisbergen's dive. Very, very aggressive by the championship yes. leader. Okay. And then, yeah, he got fucked up. No, Scott Pye got him, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, and then it stacks on. I mean, they enter three wide going into turn one, and when you find yourself turned around at the front of the field. Here we go, Mark Winterbottom. Let's listen to this. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just turned itself off. Full cut out. Yeah. yeah, full cut out. So that's an ECU drama, probably. Certainly electrical issue, and that parked him on the outside. Now, watch the chaos that unfolds. The dive on your top left of screen, and then watch them all park up. So, Winkup got hit because of that, and then bang, right-hand front contact there for Frosty into Anton's car. Here's the onboard shot. Anton just dragged a little bit wide, and then bang, he got hit. So, Scott Pye caused that first rotation, and then chaos. Oh. And that's, that is real. That's exactly the feeling and the sound you get. I'm going to pick it up here as we see Anton. He's stuck there, nowhere to go. Oh, look at Coulthard's car up. Just saying what a great job both the Team Sydney cars involved in that one. Now on board with Van Gisbergen. It's deep, but he gets it done, locks the rears. The run's a little wide, but by there he's clear of Anton. Yeah, he's right, isn't he? So I we think need to might... see it from Pi's car. Yeah, well, I reckon Pi got that inside kerb, GT. So as he's tried to get it turned in there, he's hit the inside kerb and then upset the braking and wasn't able then to maintain control, make contact with the back of Anton Di Pasquale. Wow, what a start. <laughs> Have a look at the damage. <laughs> Mate, we've been talking up the Team 18 team all weekend and here, caught in that one, Mark Winterbottom, drama off the line, caught up in that one, Brad Jones, we were hoping that they were going to have a clean run this weekend, cars up towards the front, Ludo Lacroix, engineer for Anton Di Pasquale, there's a lot of very despondent looks in these garages at the moment. And there's three beneficiaries, Van Gisbergen from the original aggressive move, so he gets to P1, but who do you reckon had the biggest advantage? Mostert and Waters. Yeah, Mostert so and they've Waters. popped into. into well, it's usually fourth. those guys we expect to get involved in this <laughs> with together, isn't it? But they managed to get through. So maybe they've finally worked out how to get off the line together and not make contact. Perkat from fifth up to second. Mostert from eighth to third. Jake Kostecki from eleventh to fifth. That's a good one. He's got. He's made his way through the dramas at turn one nicely. We're under safety car now, and you can see everyone's fanned out. We haven't even gone racing really yet, but everyone wants to keep the cars cool, keep the engines cool, keep the drivers cool. Big damage there on Fabian Coulthard's car as they try and get that one out of the way and we can get back racing, but wow. We thought there'd be drama at turn one. Probably not that much drama though. <laughs> We've seen it so much here over the years that there can be contact, there can be drama, there can be malaise. 
but to our, our pole sitter, Anton Di Pasquale, big damage on the rear of that car. They'll have a lot of work ahead of them tonight. You were parked down there with Mark Beretta talking about what could, yes. what could unfold. Yes, we you were. You probably didn't think it was going to be that bad. Well, I did say chaos, but <laughs> we got chaos. <laughs> So let's just have a look at this one again. The winner bottom one, he does a really good job actually, gets himself out of the way. He was reporting that he had issues before we actually got racing. Van Gisbergen jinx one way and then jinx it is actually quite a nice move, very nice move. Then Pi, he looks for that hole but then gets up on the inside curve at turn one on the entry and that's upset his car. Got into Anton and big, big damage to Anton Di Pasquale and Todd Hazelwood. Those boys will have the BJR team and Dick Johnson racing. They'll have a lot of work ahead of them tonight to get those cars ready for tomorrow. Good presence of mind by Frosty there because he actually moved it out yep. of the way. Once he knew that there was an ECU drama or electrical problem, he moved it away, which that was really clever. Have a look at the contact here with Mark Winterbottom onto the rear of Wing Cup because that actually fired him off to the right. I didn't realise he had so much damage. So he's down in 19th. Now we're on board with Percat. Now he is a clean skin here. Watch this. Yeah. The world she opens. Well, the you. world stops as well. So you think, oh, I can't break any harder. Makes contact with the back of Pi, but the, the, the initial damage has already happened here. Then gives bring up the inside. A little rub, but then bang. That's a significant hit in the rear from Pi. Oh, I, those noises. Yeah. Uh, you feel like you're there, don't you? Oh, oh they are bad. Things back. Bad memories, they do. You see the disappointment there with Mark Winterbottom punching the steering wheel. So, chaos. The start of race 12. Our 31 race series. Proudly supported by Repco. And it's one of those days there's lots of Repco parts required to fix these things at the moment because all of those cars in the middle there, they end up making more contact. Here comes Scott Pye. So this is for damage, no doubt. They've decided they need to try and fix this under safety car. Front splitter. But they made heavier contact than I thought they were going to. Especially Hazelwood. He hit yeah, really he hard. he went in hard. That was a really big contact you heard from the onboard shot of Anton Di Pasquale. As we see here now, the DeWalt Team 18 team going to work on Scott Pye's car. Trying to fix this front splitter. This is usually a three or four minute job. They want to get this done under safety car. Yeah, and the other thing they'll be trying to do here, Garth, it's quite a clever strategy, isn't it? You saw them fix the car best they could, ship it out and get it back in, because whilst we're in the safety car, you've got to get it out. I can see over there the safety car's on the other side of the circuit. They don't want to go a lap down. So that's one drama going on there being played out. Remember the compulsory pit stops we told you about? These don't count. You've got to get to lap five before it counts as a compulsory pit stop. Mark Winterbottom's car in the garage. Look at the damage here. Now, they're not sure what's going on here. They're looking at all the usual things under the bonnet. They're plugging in computers. They're trying to find loose leads. ECU problem, really not sure what it is. I don't know if I can get in there and get a quick word with Mark Winterbottom. I might just try to... Hey, Frosty, I hate interrupting you this time, mate. It looks so good for you today. And then it all turned pear shape. What happened as you're coming up to the line there? Oh, this sport gives me the shits, mate, sometimes. <laughs> so cruel here, but you keep coming back. But right up to the line, power cut off. I did a full cycle, power come on, power cut off. Five second border, power cycled again and got it going. I still beat him off the line and then the thing conked out. Get, just, it's cruel, mate, it's cruel, because uh, even with all that shit, I still beat him off the line and I could have led to one and blocked him and got going. The car's quick. Um, Ah, oh, it's just shit, mate. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I don't know what to say. So. Well done, mate. Great presence of mind getting out of the way. And uh, I'm sure you'll bounce back this afternoon because he's right. The car's quick, and he is. And spare a thought for the poor guys down at Team Sydney. So Fabian Coulthard straight on the radio to Jeff Slade. His engineer said, mate, car is cooked. So he was out of action straight away. I caught Jeff out the back walking around the transporters just trying to cool off because he was so angry. And the reason why they're so disappointed was more than anything, they have managed to get Gary's car moving again, which is the good news. But they were going to look at losing potentially 38 laps of data on this brand new super soft tyre. His words were, it's just two steps back, uh, two steps forward and one step back with this team at the moment. It's a hard game, there's no doubt about that. And those comments from Mark Winterbottom certainly recognise the cruelty of this mad sport we play. Look at his face. Uh, oh, just, just despondent, isn't it? You, we've done the same. You parked there, you haven't done anything wrong. Mechanical failure. And you said it earlier in the championship that you're trying to limit the things that are out of your control and what you do there. Frosty's just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And in the end, he's actually caught up in the incident when he was really pretty much parked up. I think he was getting pushed into it from behind. There was probably not much he could do about that. But just you hear from Mark Winterbottom what it means to him still. You know, he's been in this championship for so long. He just 
play, and it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> it's just I mean, the best contact there. Oh, that's yeah, the one, that's the one that yeah. does the damage to Di Pasquale's car. And there's big damage to both the Team Sydney cars. Jack Smith's in there. Todd Hazelwood with big damage. Both the two BJR cars again. You know, we really wish that for them they get a clean run with all four of their cars. Let's just listen to this one as we run down to turn one and let it play out. Oh, have a listen to this bit now. Oh, that's the one. That's Hazelwood. You think it's over, yeah. and then it comes even more. There's more that keep coming. You can see the reaction, the animosity from Mark Winterbottom and such a great lead up. Qualifying on the front row of the grid. It's just chaos. And you can hear the expressions he has understood for a long time what it takes to be competitive in this sport. And there's, I think there's six seriously damaged cars yeah. out of that, isn't there? Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of work ahead of a lot of teams here. And hopefully they can actually get those cars fixed. Some of those contact, big, big damage. We hope there's no real structural damage underneath these cars, and these all these cars can be back for us tomorrow. Big shout out to all our Motorsport Australia car clubs and all our volunteers and officials to have this race meeting going. It's great to be back in the Northern Territory and fantastic to have so many of those people involved. 270 volunteers plus 40 from last night for the drag racing. So. Again, a big thank you from everybody at Supercars. So the BP Ultimate safety car continues to lead the field around. Van Gisbergen, a bold move. And I reckon if Anton Di Pasquale had his time again, he would have covered. Oh. Didn't cover well enough. No, that he was, didn't. That's, a, that's an amateur one, that one. Well, it's just a potential that you're, you're up against Shane Van Gisbergen, who's got all the tricks in his trick bag. He jinked one way to fake it and then send it straight down the inside. And Anton, when he watches that replay, exactly right, he'll think, I can do a better job of that next time. 100%. Green and Ludo will be saying the same thing to him. So we're getting set now. They're starting to form up. The restart here will be very important for Percat to get a good run because he's got Mostert and Cam Waters right in behind. Going onto the straight, slowing up. Oh, they're all bumping into each other as per normal. They're all bumping into each other as per normal. It's an average restart. They're all sure that Mostert couldn't capitalise. Nice job by Cam Waters. And in the end, Zane, uh, Jack Kosecki was able to stay in that spot in fifth. Did a fantastic job. So Van Gisbergen backed him up a little bit, made sure that no one could get a run on him for that big long run down the front straight into turn one. Here we go. Kosecki blocking to the inside. He doesn't want Slade getting him early in this race. Slade sideways needs to now cover. That's Kurt Kosecki in the Walkinshaw Andretti United wildcard car. Brody Kosecki. Kostecki on Kostecki. There's a heap of them out there. It's inevitable they'll come together at some point. There was a little bump there. So that little bump between the Kosteckis has just pushed him slightly wide. David Reynolds is up to 13th now. So he started right at the back. So nice job. But that first corner incident it's obviously helped his quest. Will Davison battling down the back there with Andre Heimgartner. We understand, remember, how competitive those Mustangs were at tail and bend at the last meeting. Big run down the second longest straight on our tour. And Van Gisbergen continues to lead. Perkat defending Mostert's had a look up the inside. He wants to get it done straight away. Perkat gives him a little bit of room. Just keeps Mostert interested just that little bit longer, but Perkat closes the door. These blokes have been battling for years, haven't they? They come through the Super 2 category, our development series. A pretty strong year, actually, with Scott Pye and others. That was Davy Reynolds over that inside curve. So he's trying to do the crisscross now on James Courtney, but he's on the wrong side. You might have to bat on with it here because he's going to get caught out. Forward now capitalises on bad track positioning. Dave wasn't able to get down the inside at five. He was in on the wrong side. And now forward's putting plenty of pressure on. His elbow's out at the moment, that's for sure. Everyone wants track position straight away. Keep some clear air on the front of the car to look after the tyre. Pit lane drive through penalty car 20, pit lane drive through penalty car 24. So there you go. Confirmation. Scott Pye. Tim Schenken giving Scott Pye the bad news. Car 20, 
pit lane, drive through penalty for that contact, that turn one. This is playing for keep stuff because oh, they're all slipstreaming each other. Wind Cup goes to the outside now. Locked wheel there for Reynolds. Can he get down the inside without making contact? They hit wheel to wheel. It's still not over because they're still alongside each other on the way out of one. This started here on the last lap with Dave Reynolds and James Courtney and it's still going a lap later. Now it's Bryce Forward and Dave Reynolds side by side. We run up into turn five. Zane Goddard's trying to get up the inside. Jack LeBrock's there, Jamie Winkup. He's been shuffled back in that first corner incident that we saw it right at the start of the race. He doesn't want a part of this. He wants to get to the front and get on with it. But, geez, it's peak hour at the moment. <laughs> He'd be saying, geez, these boys play for keeps down. <laughs> yeah, you know, they'll be back up the front. It's <laughs> easier. <laughs> exactly. I've never been this serious about it. I mean, at the moment, I'm battling. Where's Winkup? He's battling for 17th. So he's caught up from that first corner problem. And here we go. So wide, off turn five. And then there's always the Biff and Barge, the Dodgem car stuff between five and six. And then another replay of the exit to turn one. Courtney. Oh, Courtney, what... almost a tank slapper then. So that's what started the side-by-side the -side run of Courtney and Reynolds. And then here we go. This is a half a lap later. They're still going at it. Reynolds was one out and one back. Lost a couple of spots in that battle. So you'd say Courtney won, Reynolds zero in that battle. Bryce Forward got himself in there. Now Reynolds! This was the replay where he just grabbed the inside front, tried to open that door with the can opener, get up the inside of Bryce Forward, wasn't able to do it. Well, it wasn't just the first lap that was Coyote Scaffy there, going at it still. They yeah, certainly are, GT. And see there that Scott Pye's just served his lane penalty for that infringement at turn one. And his teammate just driving back out after repairing Mark Winterbottom's car. So most of actually has got a little bit of pace here on Percat. It's a hard place to pass. And when you get into the slipstream like this, you're in hot air, the brakes are hot, the driver's hot, everything's hot. Hard to pass once you're in there. Yes, yeah, the hot air is the, the critical thing you mentioned there, Scafi. It's the front tyre now, but Mostert, he got a beautiful run onto the front straight, used the slipstream, and it almost looked to me like Perkat let him go there. I reckon you're right. I think you said that Perkat had speed on him, uh, Mostert had speed on Perkat, so let him go. Our first stoppers are in, they're in as soon as the pit window opened, Reynolds in. Wing Cup we saw in the lane as well, he wanted to get out of all that drama. Back in 19th, 20th spot, Will Brown. Truck assist crew go to work for Jack LeBrock. Such a tight pit lane, this one. We always see drama when there's multiple cars in the lane here. We managed to get through that one nicely, though. And they've chosen to do that because under safety car, it's roughly six laps shorter in terms yeah. of distance. So they're going to be quite bold by coming in early. And again, track position is king here. Clear air serves you very well. So Van Gisbergen continues to lead from Mostert, Percat, Waters, and Jake Gostecki. That's the top five. So a beautiful job by Jake Kostecki. When you look at those movers and shakers, he's up six spots. Kirk Kostecki's up eight spots. Thomas Randall up seven. James Courtney up at 11. So there's been some real beneficiaries of that early madness. Here we go, Randall up the inside of Macaulay Jones. Nice move. Like a hot knife through butter, that one. Courtney's trying to go with him. A little bit of contact there. JC gets it done over Macaulay Jones. Those early stoppers last lap were looking for that get a bit of clean air, but weren't able to do it. And here's the Bunnings trade power pass. Check this out. Really nicely done. We didn't think he'd get down there. And I think you're right. I reckon discretion's the better part of Valor on that one for Burkett. He knew that Mostert had pace. We're online now, and he just sneaks it to the left. He moved it a little, a little bit, and then he finally committed to the pass down the left-hand side. Nicely executed. A little bit of a run here, GT. He's just got enough, and he moves it. Perkat had a little bit of a cover, but it wasn't a proper yeah. cover, was it? It was just a, yeah, OK, mate, on through you come, because I think the laps since, you can look at the gap now that Mostert's able to pull out on Perkat. So Mostert's going long, Van Gisbergen's going long, all these front runners are going long while they've got clear air. And that's the critical term. Everyone wants to get themselves, find their own little bit of racetrack, drive the race car exactly how they want to drive it, not drive it to disturb there, the hot air, by following other cars. And interesting, Van Gisberg has just done the fastest lap of the race, GT. So a 6.93, that's almost four tenths of a second faster than Mostert. So they must have said, 
down there at Red Bull Ampole Racing. Hey, mate, let's get on with this now, because people have come in and you don't want to get the undercut. So that will hurt them in terms of overall pace, but that pace there is so much faster than anybody else. And Shane's very, very good at being very patient at the start of the race. He won't use the tyre up early. He'll wait, he'll bring the tyre in nicely, and then in this phase of the race, he'll start to stretch that gap. So the gap now out to 2.3 seconds over Chaz Mostert. Mostert's got his track position over Perkat, and he's extended that gap out now by 1.6 seconds. So everyone's going to be driving this one at their own speed because we still don't know. It's a great unknown about how this Dunlop Super Soft tyre is going to last over the distance. The best way is to try and split the race in half. That's ultimately you won't get you the track position you need. So under investigation, that restart, well, that'll be good luck to yeah. do that. I, yeah. mean, I don't know where you start with that. You'll be finished by 4 o'clock in the morning if you start that process right now. So they've mentioned car 9, Will Brown under investigation for a safety car restart. But I'm with you, Scapey. I think the half of the field is likely to be under investigation for that one. From position five backwards, everybody was involved. Yeah. So good luck with that one. Now, the other thing on the radio a second ago, GT, Shane was asked, do I want down one side, the loaded side, or do I want rears? He said rears. So the balance of the car is really important now to put the right two tyres on, whether you're on the right-hand side, the loaded side, or across the rear. Well, that's a bit of a tradition from the Red Bull Ampole Racing Team. You traditionally see that team put rears on, whereas on board here with Will Davison, the Shell V-Power Mustang, this team Ball, traditionally will put side tyres down. To drive through penalty, car 9 for a breach of so the safety just car restart procedure. Car 9, Will Brown will get a pit lane penalty for that safety car restart infringement passed before the control line we're hearing, which is very easy to do here. From the run where you come onto the front straight to where the actual control line is up at the start line, it's a long run. And you've got to be patient if you've got to run on someone. You can't get in front of them before you cross that start line. And on our corrected order, we actually reckon that he was going to be about eighth or ninth. So that's a big penalty. Here's Percat. So one of the really serious front runners now comes in, lap 15 of 38. Fabian Coulthard has uh, popped up back here in pit lane. Unlucky to see your car out on lap one. Can you talk us through what happened at turn one? Yeah, well, I haven't seen a replay, so I don't want to comment too much. But, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, I got a good start. I got past McCauley in the, the row in front of me, and everything was going OK. But I saw Anton get turned around, and I sort of was aiming for where he was, but he sort of spun back to the inside. And I was trying to check up, and... Uh, I think it was Frosty that was in front of me and people were just into the back of me. So, um, yeah, I can only go off the feeling that I felt, but wrong place, wrong time. You know, I feel bad for the guys. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done to, you know, try and get the local legends uh, car back out on track, but um, they'll do their best. Have you heard how your teammate's car is? Because he was caught up in that one as well. Uh, no, I haven't heard, sorry. How bad's your car? It didn't look very good. So, um, you know, Jeff asked if I could drive it back and I'd already undone my seatbelts by that stage, so I plugged all back in and and tried to drive off, but, um, yeah, it's no go. Unlucky, mate. Yeah, cheers. It is. That's a very good summary of that, Chad, because he was unlucky. He was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time, and that's what can happen down there at the first tournament. That's one of those places... Have a look at the damage to the front of that car. That was hit hard, wasn't it? And that last hit that we said from Todd Hazelwood was significant damage. So this gap has leaked out to 2.4 seconds. Van Gisbergen leads over Mostert and Waters. Mostert's been able to establish a pretty big gap over Cam Waters. Jake Kostecki's hung in really well. That's the driver of the race so far. Absolutely. They, those guys certainly found something from Friday practice going into qualifying today. And the encouraging thing for them is it's not just one lap speed that they have at the moment. They've got some good race pace with that car. And while you're up the front of the field, stay out. Stay out for as long as you can because you keep clear air. Split this race in half. Understand what the tyre's going to do from a degradation point of view. The further you can go at the start of this race, the better condition your tyre will be at the end of the race after you do that pit stop. And for Jake, it'll serve him well, Garth, because when you're at the front of the field and you're operating with those guys, you think, oh, hey, I'm up there. Firstly, it's good for your confidence. Secondly, you work out that you're as fast as them. And thirdly, you go, hey, it's not quite as wild as I was last weekend. Well, we were talking about Jamie Winkup when he was at the back for 20th and it was sheep stations. <laughs> Jake is thinking, well, how long's this been going on up the front? This is a lot easier. That's right. So, <laughs> got my arm on the window. <laughs> so, nice job. Van Giersbergen, Mostert, Waters, Kostecki, Slade. That's the current top five. Lap 17 of 38. So, when you think about this now with Cam Waters, 
We've got Percat, who's on our numbers. That's going to be very close. About 0.3 of a second between Percat and Waters. Once Waters does, he stop. So at the moment, the back of the podium is up for grabs. Well, it is right now, but Percat has stopped much, much earlier. He's the first one to roll the dice in pit lane and come in and take that stop. It was a reasonable stop for Percat around five seconds, stationary time, so not too bad. And now shoot back to pit lane. Thomas Randall in his wildcard appearance. Second one. Oh, oh stalls it. Good job. Good job. Rookie good. error, easily done. You want to get going. Too much throttle percentage brings with the throttle on, with the, the pit limiter, it just kills the engine and there's just no power to take it out of the box. And if you haven't been with us through the course of the coverage this weekend, Tickford have acquired through supercars the fourth racing entitlements contract, so the wreck that they can run a car under for next year. And they've made the announcement that young Thomas Randall will be the driver. So this weekend's wildcard, what a great way of announcing next year's program for him. And he's a ripping young bloke, isn't he? Well, it's really turned into preparation for 22 now, hasn't it? And I, you had a bit of, we all had a bit of an inkling that that was going to be the case when they announced the three wildcard appearances for Thomas Randall at the tail and bend previously. The Darwin this weekend, then he'll also run at Barbagello Raceway later in the year. So fantastic for a young opportunity for him. He's certainly the guy that deserves a run. And uh, it's great to see that be confirmed for him. Heard you guys talking about how impressive this run has been from Jake Kostecki. Furthermore, to how good this has been. He's actually doing it without his usual engineer, Chris Ducky, this week. Matt Saunders, who's come across from Team 18 to fill in uh, with the absence of Chris Ducky. So given how instrumental Chris has been in the speed of that car this year, to be up there inside the top five without him here is really impressive. Yeah, it is. It's good pick up. Chad Bryce forward made a nice move then on Macaulay Jones down at turn one. And the local lad from the Northern Territory, Bryce Forward is up 12 spots. So that gap just gone out from 2.4 to 2.7 seconds. Van Gisbergen slightly faster. In fact, he, the order, top four cars, top five cars were actually the fastest five cars. I know that sounds like it's normal, but it's not normal. Normally there'll be a car that's coming for a stop that will have established a higher degree of pace after that stop. That's not the case right now. Van Gisbergen, Mostert, Percat, Waters, very, very fast. Kurt Kostecki on screen, one of the fabulous travelling Kosteckis that are here racing this weekend. <laughs> Had his stop, he's currently running in 15th. Do they travel together? I don't think they do. I don't think they do, but if they did, they'd take a big top with them wherever they went. <laughs> RV trip for the Kostekis everywhere they go. There's a lot of Kostekis, but they're doing a really good job here at Hidden Valley this weekend. So he did a really good job to be out qualifying Bryce Fulwood. Okay, mate. You spoke about it just before the race, and we were talking about wildcard entries, and you've got to say that that test that they didn't do at Winton also hurt him because he was actually they were scheduled to test and it didn't happen and that race for instance and uh, that circumstance you get a few more miles you get a bit better feel on a soft tire because the winton race meeting was postponed a super soft tire and in most it goes so this could be the undercut this is really yeah, important yeah, we've spoken really about this before you'll on. probably find that van gisbergen will stop next time let's have a listen yeah, around here. line yourself up to the board mate rear tires only clear lane that's it mate line yourself up Nice stop. Good stop. Very Anthony McDonald on the radio there. Really nice stop. And look what he's coming back out into. We've been talking about clear air, looking for your own little bit of racetrack. And look, there's still no one on the front straight. Here comes Nick Perkett. He stopped a few laps earlier. That's what would have dragged Mostert in. They would have realised that Perkett was coming on those fresher rear tyres. Will Davison in the lane now. Tough race so far for the Shell V Power team. Losing Anton Di Pasquale early. And Will Davison buried in the field after a poor qualifying and then getting caught up in that same incident at turn one. And now the converse. Have a look in front of Will right yeah, now. Yeah, so he's come back, cars. In, come back into peak hour on the motorway and he has to try and battle his way through that. The next thing we need to see is what does Mostert's pit stop do for Van Gisbergen? It doesn't drag him in this lap. He had two and a half odd seconds on Mostert before Mostert pitted. Does it make them flinch next time by? How's the lap time? He's just done a 7.5. His fastest lap of the race is a 6.9. And lap 21, he does a 7.5. Let's just see now, Jake Kostecki pit. 
He looked like he overshot, but they've gone down the working side with that car, down the right side of the car. So we've seen a lot of people that have stopped have put rears on, as we see here from Macaulay Jones. But Jake Kostecki, they've gone down the right side. So something different. They feel that's what's going to work for them. And Van Gisberg has just been told, in this lap, no option. So David Couchy on the phone for that. And here's young Mark Larkham, who's going to take us through this, because this is a very, very important stop. It was roughly 2.7 seconds before the stop started to unfold between the first two cars. You see here, Macaulay Jones finds his way back in. Zane Goddard manages to get around him. And we have Scott Pye getting himself out of the way. He took that drive-through penalty. Now the leader, Van Gisbergen, in the lane. And the reason there's no option, Garth, is that gap's back to about 1.5. So he, that lap, straight away, Mostert was able to get a yield. Marco? Well, if you haven't been tuned into our telecast during the year, you'll notice something big and different about our pit stops here in a sprint race. Watch this. Only two rattle guns, not four like a Bathurst. Look at this. They can't get the gun on the nut. They can't get the safety lock. There's a little... A little prong inside that rattle gun. He's trying to bang the little red safety catch in, and it won't go in. So the nut, the gun, the socket won't engage on the gun. There goes Chaz, right behind me. Oh, wow, catastrophe. This should have happened in four seconds. Two rear tyres. Oh, bad news. Almost 30 seconds. We've spoken about the cruelty of this game. Van Gisbergen's bold move at turn one put him in a position to dominate this race. He then has a drama with a left-hand rear tyre, and that pit stop turns from a four-second stop to a 30-second stop, and he is now parked in 20th. That's it. He's out of the game. He's the last of the lead lap runners. He is done and dusted. Like, obviously, we've still got 14-odd laps to go in this one, but wow. We thought it was going to be tight between Van Gisbergen and Mostert at the stop. We said we felt there had to be no mistakes for the Triple Eight Red Bull pit stop. But wow, would you have ever predicted a 30 second pit stop for our leader? Well, not when they're the benchmark. No. Those teams at the front of pit lane are the best normally under that level of pressure. And to execute those stops, they have been the benchmark. Here we go. Here's Percat doing a really nice job. They're going to be in contention later in this race. We've got him currently, on our correct order, second. So Perkat, he stopped early, manages the car down into turn one. And this is the real part of the race where you have to be disciplined. You can't abuse the tyre. The pit stop cycle's done. Yes, mostert has got more fresh to rear tyres on. He stopped later, but Perkat, he's in a very strong position. Who's behind him at the moment for position? Brody Kostecki. He's the one that's made big, big gains. Stopped early, and now he's running, I think, corrected third, or is it Waters? Waters, so... So he's fourth. Yeah, so... Good Brody job. Kostek, he's made big gains. Yeah, it's a good job, isn't it? It is. It is. So is Waters, is, Waters is yet to stop, so it's actually Kostecki behind Perkat on track. We expect that when Waters takes his stop, whenever that may be, he'll slot in between those two. But Perkat's made gains, certainly. He stopped early as well as Percat, so they need to manage this to the end of the race. Percat and Kostecki, they need to manage this tyre, and that's what I was saying earlier. It's about discipline. It's about looking after the tyre. Don't getting excited. Check this out. Under investigation, car eight for breach of minimum tyre pressure. Percat. <laughs> They've been so good all weekend. That is under investigation. We were just talking about their performance. They're scheduled at this point on our corrected order to finish second behind Mostert. This is a big story. You might ask, well, how does race control know what tyre pressures are in Nick Perkat's car? All the cars have tyre pressure monitors. That data goes back to the race teams, but that data also goes back to V8 or to supercars. And they, there's Adrian Burgess talking with Brad Jones. No doubt Brad Jones is looking for his get out of jail free card, but Adrian doesn't look like he's in a good mood today. So this will play out. They wouldn't have been investigated if they didn't feel like they saw something on the screen that wasn't, shouldn't have been there, whether that pressure was too low. Adrian's the head of motorsport for supercars, so that investigation is currently I taking place. He's talking to Brad job. Jones right now. Tim Slade in the pits. Retires only for Tim. He's going to be up there in contention somewhere also. They've done a nice job, but this is a big story for Nick Percat. Car 8 under investigation.
for breach of minimum tyre pressure. Now, they've got to have more than 17 PSI. Oh, that was a nasty move, wasn't it? Right, this you always do it, rejoin, don't you? you? always flinch. The rejoin here really gets your attention. You're not really sure whether the driver on track has seen you rejoin. It's here from Larco. Well, what you'll see up and down the pit lane all day are the tyres before they put them out. They sit them out here in the sun so they can cook them. And they come up to 17 pound, they go above it, they bleed them down to 17 pound. Up and down. And they're constantly bleeding them down because they're not allowed any lower than 17 because there's performance in that. Let's ask Brad Jones... Uh, Having a bit of a deep in a minute. Sorry, Brad, to jump in at this time, mate. Um, easy to do, but they're all monitoring tyre pressure back there at uh, race control or supercars control. What's Adrian have to say? G'day, Brad. You having a nice day at the races? What's the take? Has he said anything to you? You're going to get penalised? Right? I need to go and talk to the stewards after the race, like, okay? Well, I can tell you, Brad's not a cheat. He doesn't play the game, so whatever has happened, I can assure you, they've been caught out. Well, this is a normal rejoin here, Lucko, because we haven't got a final adjudication on what's gone on with Perkett. But he's just in behind now, Waters. And as a consequence of what's unfolding, we don't know yet as to what that final determination is. You can see the look on Brad Jones' face, a dejected team owner. The last thing they need, isn't it? I mean, they lost two cars at that first corner crash. They've got a car in second at the moment, now under investigation. Like when it rains, of course, it doesn't rain in Darwin. It's raining in the Brad Jones Racing Garage. Yeah, it's worth explaining it, isn't it? We've spoken a lot through the course of the weekend. And what a tough sport it is. It's Van Gisberg and charges down the inside. He's able to just manoeuvre his way past. And that little spot there for... Shane has put him into 19th down the inside of Gary Jacobson. He's now battling with his fellow Kiwi, Andre Heimgartner. Can you believe that you can have a car that wins last weekend, or the last time we were out, at Tail and Bend, and then you can be effectively the two last cars on the grid at this circuit? It's very strange. Oh, but it's, it just shows how competitive our sport is, doesn't it? I mean, and also we have a new tyre here. We're on a different surface. Couldn't have a more different climate. So you add all those variables into it, and that means sometimes your car just doesn't work. Amongst all this chaos, you may have noticed that Will Brown never served that drive-through penalty. Barry Ryan, there was an update there. What happened? Yeah, we got given a drive-through penalty, and we trusted Will's word that the car in front of him breaks. So we, we argued it, which kids, you shouldn't do. You shouldn't argue with the umpire, but we did. And um, the umpires obviously made a decision and reversed it. So, yeah, good credit to them, but I'll be definitely having a chat after the race to see why. And you may get one more spot, depending on how things wash out here with uh, car eight. Yeah, well, minimum tyre pressure. If it's 16.9 or 16.9, they're out, so it's illegal. So they have to get done for it. So if they don't get done, there'll be another chat. Yeah. Well, Barry Ryan there, CEO of Erebus, been quite explicit in his views. And... You can see Brody Kostecki currently in fourth and is doing a good job. He's up behind Cam Waters and he's probably in terms of pace been one of the real winners in terms of overall numbers. He's up nine spots. Will Brown up 17. But it's, a, it's an interesting scenario because when you're in the middle of all that, you're trying to run your own race, but you're also trying to verify what the others are doing. And it's such a complex level of communication. Oh, 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 wide. So a double head over here for Van Gisbergen because Andre slightly wide and he'll get down the inside, I reckon, on David Reynolds as we get through turn four. And here comes the lunge. Straight down the inside. Beautifully done, Shane Van Gisbergen. So this is the recovery drive from Van Gisbergen after that extended pit stop. 30 seconds standing still in the lane. We expect that to only be three or four seconds. So now he has to make his way from effectively the back of the field back up to the front. He was leading and leading comfortable prior to that pit stop. Now his next target is Jack LeBrock in the truck assist Mustang. And this is the World Championships for 15th, 16th and 17th. Here we go, Van Gisbergen on the inside. Nice, nice move. move. I think LeBrock saw him coming. And that means LeBrock's vulnerable to Heimgartner for the run down the front straight. Heimgartner gets up side by side. Now LeBrock, a bit of side drafting as we make the run down into turn one. That gets Dave Reynolds interested. The two Kelly Grove cars got close last time down into turn one. What happens this time? Oh, looked like it was going to lock the rear wheels then when we look at that rear shot from 
David Reynolds' car. He's able to get that one done, Andre, and then David just positioning the car in the blind spot for LeBrock. Fires from the left down to the right. Does he get in there clean? No. <laughs> Sort of see that one coming, I think, as LeBrock rejoins. And the tempers will be flaring after that one, for that, no doubt. Now, Waters on Percat. He's just set his fastest lap cam, Waters, at a 7-2. And he's got to the back of Nick Percat. Cam Waters stopped much later than Nick Percat did. And we go on board in the Monster Energy Mustang. Percat, he goes to the inside the block and keeps blocking. So. We saw earlier on our Percat. Has he outbraked himself? Will Waters get up the inside? Not quite enough. But I get the feeling that this one's a little bit inevitable. Yeah, he's got himself into a nice spot here, Garth. That spot there is really hard to get the car stopped, isn't it? They're very lively. Big change of direction. And he got the car down the inside, was able to get it stopped. And now he's got the inside line for the Valley. And that hairpin, it's only 65k, but he was able to pull it up, get it in there nice and accurately. No mistake from Cam Waters, takes over position two. So Mostert, Waters, Percat, Brody Kostecki, James Courtney, Will Brown, Jake Kostecki, Kurt Kostecki, Tim Slade, Thomas Randall. That's your current top ten. Brad Jones and the Brad Jones Racing crew watching on. Pensive. This one's unravelling for them, isn't it? Unfortunately, Nick Perkett under investigation for a minimum tyre pressure breach for the tyres that went onto the car, we think. Yeah, that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, I, th I think you're right. Yeah, so that didn't come up before the pit stop cycle. The teams will run. We have a minimum tyre pressure this weekend of 17 PSI. The teams will run as close as they can to that minimum tyre pressure, given the track temperature here and the ambient temperature here at Darwin is so high compared to where we normally run. Pick up Shane Van Gisbergen on this recovery drive after that poor pit stop. His next target will be Will Davison for 13th. We'll see some of his overtakes. First one, Gary Jacobson just gets up there and gives Jacobson as little room as he needs to get off turn 15. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and this is nice. Sort of just got helped with this one, didn't he? He did. Two Mustang Kelly Grove drivers almost did that to themselves, but he parked it nicely. And this is a nice pass. Up the inside. Nice and clean. I think Dave Reynolds saw him coming, let him go. Figured that Van Gisbergen's got speed, let him go. And then this one was really clean. I think Jack LeBrock saw him coming as well, but it's difficult to get up the inside because Jack LeBrock would have a feeling that he was there, but he can't really see them getting up the inside there. So nice and clean actually probably end up costing Jack LeBrock an extra spot, that one. This battle here on screen's not resolved. The boost Mustang, or boost Mustang of James Courtney after the boost Commodore of Brody Kostecki. And these guys have come a long way up the field. Kostecki up 13 spots, Courtney up 21 spots. You can check out the critical temperatures, 30 degrees on outside, 40 degrees on track, and it's about 500 degrees in the cabin of these cars because the tempers are flaring. And it looks like Courtney's got some pace at this point. And in fact, Van Gisbergen has just done his fastest first sector. He's done the fastest lap of the race. And remember, you get extra points if you're classified as a finisher across our championship in 2021. So Courtney now trying to position himself. He needs to come off the final corner with as little wheel spin as possible. Park himself right in behind Brody Kostecki. And then dive with a lunge to the left-hand side. I'm not sure that he was quite close enough when we got to the start finish line. The Bunny Trey Speed Trap picks up. A bit of a headwind there today, GT, because there's more than 270 there sometimes. Yep. But We've got a pretty strong southeaster, and that straight runs pretty much east-west. So the wind direction is on the nose, headwind for the cars. Courtney has another oh. nibble up the inside at turn five, and that headwind up the front straight turns into a tailwind going into turn five. We saw that little stouse between Kostecki and Courtney running into turn five. Courtney's able to turn his car a little bit tighter and drive off the corner square, and that's what you want to do from a driving perspective to make the rear tire lift. We're late in the tie stint. We said that Brody Kostecki, he stopped early in the pit stop cycle. 
And potentially those rear tyres of his are just starting to protest enough. They feel like they've done enough work in the heat of Darwin today. Unfortunately, they've got to do four more laps. Yes, they certainly do. And at lap 35, Courtney does look like he's got pace, but when you're parked in behind there and everything's hot, the brakes are hot, the tyres are hot, the engine's hot, the incoming air, you can just feel that. That's why James pointed out there he wasn't going to be able to pass. He just wanted to get a golf full of some cooler air. And we're talking about cooler air. It's 30 degrees ambient, so nothing's cool. Well, it's less hot air, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and that's more about keeping the front tyre, keeping some airflow up the brake ducts, which then radiates into the rims and keeps the front tyre as cool as you can. That's the limiting factor of being able to follow as close as you can. If the front tyre overheats, you lose front grip. Here we go. We're on board with someone. Who are we on board with? Kostecki. Brody Kostecki. We need to see that. We Did need he get to see unloaded? what happened there. Brody's now taken the shortcut. Right, mate. You go right. and and this will be an interesting through there. one. This is an interesting one. You can't, I don't think you can do that. No, well, well we, we've seen it before with yep. David Reynolds, haven't we? So they put those tyre bundles through the valley there to stop you from going straight across. So Brody will be upset. Think this might have a little bit of contact. Check this out. Two boost oh. mobile sponsored cars. And they come together. It's hard to know whether he was up far enough. It's a hard, it's a difficult angle. I want to see if we have an onboard from James Courtney's car because I think I may have just seen the rear of his car moving around a little bit as he was trying to position it up the inside of Brody Kostecki. This one might show us. We're looking from the back of Brody Kostecki's car. Courtney's going to go up the inside here. Oh, it doesn't really show us the attitude of Courtney's car. So this one, Craig Baird's going to have to pick out that initial contact. Here, here we, we go. go. Yeah, listen. That one's not such great viewing for James Courtney. So we've got that initial contact between Courtney and Kostecki, but then we've also got the rejoin of Brody Kostecki where he's taken out the hairpin, shortcutted, and rejoined. He's currently still in fourth place. But we need to hear what Craig Baird has to say about that shortcut of the track. We saw David Reynolds do that many, many years ago here. And since then, I feel like that rule's changed and you can't do that anymore but we'll wait for our adjudication on that one. It always looks worse for the inside car because when you know that the outside car is turning across, you try to stop more at the end of the stop and it actually tends to impact the zone that you make contact in. And we know that you've got to get to, as a peripheral vision, you've got to get to basically the B pillar. Halfway up the car is where you've got to get to. Just put, put that, was that, head, that was the was headlight, headlight cover. Headlight cover coming out of Brody Kostecki. Grabbed my attention, that's for sure. I think it got his too, because he was struggling to get it pulled up into turn one. So we see the rest of the field here. It's that Zane Goddard just locks the inside front into turn one. It's very easy to do at this late stage of the race. Front tyres, that inside front tyre has been on the car for 37 laps now. It's probably had enough. Easy to lock the inside front, but this guy, Chaz Mostert, he's got a 12-second gap over Cam Waters. We've sort of forgotten about him. He's been out by himself doing it easy, and this is how he did it in Tassie. He just pulled a gap and ran away. There could be some controversy here because we haven't resolved the percat issue with the minimum tyre pressure. That's the back of the podium. Brody Kostecki was in front of James Courtney, so they were battling for the back of the podium if percat gets penalised. Now, we know that Courtney made contact, Brody went off, but Brody shortcut of the track. So he might actually have another penalty, which might put Courtney further up, but Courtney could get pinged for the contact. So if you're in about seventh or eighth, you're a chance for the podium That's here. That's right. Paul, uh, a five-second time penalty for car 99, breaching the uh, race director driving uh, briefing notes. So driver briefing notes that will be you cannot shortcut from turn five to turn seven now the reason that that's important is five seconds it's actually five seconds between them no that's per uh, count no, so yes, sorry yeah, five it's... seconds will drop Brody Kostecki to about nine, nine or ten yeah right so Mostert though well done, he buddy. brings it well to done. the line we'll take the peerless in this we'll one Great job. 12 and a half seconds. Nice job, Chaz Mostert. Just re-signed, and that's not a bad way to have your first race after signing a new sign a new deal. Absolutely great for Walking Tour and Dreddy United. His second win job, of the 2021 championship. And for Chaz Mostert, impeccable. He parked the car in the right spot early. Yeah, in the race procedure. He come from the fourth but, row of the grid. Uh, yeah, great job, buddy.
we were saying there might have been some drama with Cam Waters. He wasn't worried about Cam Waters. He was able to drive it beautifully. Nice pit stops, no mistakes. And his career 15th win. Outstanding. And as you correctly pointed out, Garth, very nice way to start with a new contract and a new multi-year deal. Yeah, it certainly is. Grant McPherson has joined this team as well. So certainly Wapachaw and Andretti United on the up. They took advantage. Well, not that they took advantage. They had speed anyway. But Van Gisbergen took himself out of the race with a poor pit stop. They had a drama getting the wheel off. But Chas Moffat managed the tyre beautifully. Managed the car. Not a real a mark on it. That's how you like to win races. Certainly is. So Mostert wins from Waters. That's rock solid. Percat is third. We don't know what's going to go on in post-race investigation. What will happen in the stewards' room? Who knows? James Courtney made contact with his Boost Mobile mate. He's currently fourth, so he'll get some sort of penalty, probably. Will Brown, currently fifth, he might end up on the back of the podium. And he got a pit lane penalty in the race, and then they took it back off him. <laughs> So, geez, we go all the way back to the start of the race, turn one, where half the field got taken out. Then we had all this drama all the way through, and we still don't really know who's going to be on the podium. We'll see these three as they make their way to the podium. Mostert, Waters, and Percat will be there for now, but Brad Jones said that he's got to go to the headmaster's office, and they're going to have a little chat. And we just saw our podium for the Repco Supercars Championship pulling up on the main straight. So the podium's getting set down there, but we just don't know who's going to walk into third spot. Well, as you said, Mostert and Waters, they're a lock. They're going up and they're going to spray some champagne this afternoon. But you have to feel, I mean, Percat currently third. They've had a strong car all weekend, and if it's going to be a minor tyre pressure infringement, that's frustrating. Yes, that's the rule, and that will dictate a penalty, but, wow, they've, they've deserved to be on the podium, but if they break the rule... Totally. You don't get to be there. Exactly. And that's the sport that we play. So Mostert from Waters. We know that one's rock solid. Then have a look through there. Percat, Courtney. We understand some conjecture around third and fourth. And through the field, nice drive back by Winkup, who was right off the road at Turn 1, and Van Gisberg, and superb drive after that 30-second stop. So he had a 30-second stop, and he ended up 28 and a half seconds off the lead of the race, and that includes passing cars to get back through the field. Set the fastest lap of the race, so he'll get five points for that also. But wow. Pertec victory lane. We know who is in P1. This young man's done a great job. Chas Mostert. We understand that that team is continuing to improve. He's third in the championship. And we know that he's putting a much more consistent season together. He had that little drum with the throttle cable at Sandown. He greets the crowd. The reaction from the locals is fantastic. And the second part about the incident, he had a crash with Cam Waters at the previous race meeting. So there's been a couple of hiccups, as you can see there, with Adam DeBore and Bruce Stewart and the rest of the guys. Elation for that team and superb job by Chas Mostert to get into position one. He's driving very well, Garth. He certainly is. Certainly, and he's, you can see he just feels right at home at this team now. He's 18 months into his change from Tickford across to Holden, across to Walkinshaw and Andretti United. You can just see he feels very comfortable in that environment. And he drives very, very well when he's like that. When he feels comfortable, he knows he's got Adam DeBore on the other end of the radio who engineers his car. And uh, let's hear from Chad. He's got Chaz Mostert. Well, congratulations, Chas Mostert, winner of race 12. You've parked this car, position one, Pertec victory lane. At what point did you realise that this race was going to fall in your lap? Well, I didn't really. I think um, starting eighth, I was thinking, I just hope I get through turn one. And then I lucked into coming out of turn one in third. I thought, oh, well, that's, that's a good result. Hope the race car's OK. And, um, yeah, tracked along. I was pretty quick at the start, and I was uh, a bit little bit worried about that. When you've got a quick race car at the start, you get a bit worried that <laughs> the degradation's going to come. But to, to the credit to the whole uh, Mobile One, Plants Online guys here at WAU, they gave me a pretty fast car today. But then, obviously, I didn't know about Shane. I don't know what happened, to be honest. So um, Slow stop. Wheel nut wouldn't come off. Yeah, well, there you go. We'll take them when you can get them. I've been on the other end of it plenty of times. So, um, yeah, super pumped. But it's good to have a fast race car. We need to work it on quality. Did you cop a whack in that crash down at turn one? No, I was pretty lucky. Obviously, um, me and Cam gave plenty of room down to turn one. Normally, we all got magnets. Normally, we find each other. So uh, either one of us didn't want to come together. And um, yeah, we're probably lucky we started in the fourth row. Good job, big fella. He smashed it. Well done. So yeah, super pumped for the whole team. And yeah, I'm lost for words. Hard to read back home in the bunker.
Well done. Congratulations on a big win today. I'll let you have a big drink of water too because I'm sure that he is absolutely thirsty off the back of that one. Cam Waters with some nice moves late in the race, working away on Nick Perkett. Second place here today, Pertec Victory Lane. Uh, congratulations on a, a great result. What was your take of what happened down there at Turn 1? Uh, it was all happening a little bit too far in front of me, so I couldn't really see what was going on. I just wanted to try and get through there cleanly, and obviously they all crashed into each other. And Yeah, I, I don't really know what happened, but... You know, I've had a fair bit of bad luck this year, so um, yeah, we had a little bit of good luck, so we'll take it. A good battle with Nick Perkett for that second spot on the podium today? Yeah, had a awesome battle with, with Nick, so um, obviously I knew we had a had a tie that was pretty old and um, yeah, I could be quite aggressive, and yeah, it's cool to race someone like that, you know, real hard, aggressive, rub each other a little bit, but, um, you know, be respectful. And uh, considering first and second in the championship, a little bit further down the order, that's a pretty handy bunch of, uh, bunch of points today. Yeah, definitely need to take those points, so um, like I said earlier, we've had a bit of bad luck, so take these ones and um, you know it's awesome to be able to race Chazzy and, and get through there and it wasn't us spinning off the track for once. He said the same thing actually. Well done Cam Waters, second place today. Nick Perkat third albeit sadly with a bit of a question mark at the moment. I wonder how much about this he actually knows. Uh, Nick, first of all congratulations on a great drive. Are you aware that that's under investigation at the moment? Um, I've got no idea of all that side. That's um, obviously a team department. I feel like as a driver I did my bit and if you know the other part of the thing is uh, maybe a team issue I'm not sure what happened I was just getting ready for the start and obviously uh, um, they, were, they were busy trying to fix whatever was going on so uh, yeah but credit to everyone at BJR obviously um, tough with Todd and Jack out at turn one so it's nice to get a trophy and, and bring a, a straight car home and um, great for R&J batteries the last time we were here we were P2 and um, back it up with another trophy today. It looks like at the moment they're going to let you spray some champagne but if they take this off you today how is that going to hit home? Ah, uh, yeah, it'll be hard to take, especially, you know, for me, I feel like I didn't cause any pile-ups. I didn't do anything from the driver's seat incorrect um, for the whole race. I, you know, I raced both of these guys hard and fair and um, tried to do what I could with uh, the, you know, pitting early and all that, so it'll be pretty gut-wrenching for m myself. But um, all the guys and girls at Brad Jones Racing, it'll be, it'll be tough to take. But, um, you know, it's, it's difficult enough as it is not knowing when you're going home again, <laughs> let alone <laughs> having your trophy taken away. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be keep my trophy and um, cruising back down to Victoria. No, I hear that. Thanks. Well, I'm down here with Adrian Burgess, head of motorsport. He's uh, probably the only guy that's going to have a tougher afternoon than some of those drivers. I know you can't make a decision yet, but I guess we're interested at home, Adrian, from your perspective. What went on with Nick's tyre pressure? What did you see and what's going to go to the stewards for a hearing? Oh, look, when we're on the grid, we're looking at everyone's tyre pressures as they leave the pit lane. We're watching everybody's as a rule, saying as soon as you're on the track or even in the pit lane, you've got to be 17 PSI. We saw it was very low, we saw it was borderline, and you know I feel for the engineers, they're pushing, trying to get a, every ounce of uh, performance out of this thing, but then when it started so in 16.8 and 16.6, well, you know, there's a rule book, we've got to uphold it, so we did what we had to do, we captured the data, put it in an email, sent it up to the stewards, and I hand it over to those guys, really. And whilst it's their decision, I mean, from I mean, at the end of the day, we've got to comply by the rules, right? So if you've just sent them something that says whatever, 16.8, 16.9, the take is he's probably going to cop a whack. It, it, most likely, but that's not my call. All we, all we are there, here to do is enforce the rule book. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, mate. Controversial moment, the BP Ultimate Performance moment. And that goes to Cam Waters for a very nice pass on Nick Perkett for second. Nick moved across just a little bit. Cam turned it across and was able then to do the crisscross in the middle of turn one. He was able then to come off close enough. He positioned the car nicely through this fast right and left. I love this section of road. And then he dived straight down there. Very authoritative, aggressive pass by Cam Waters. Was able to get it stopped, turned it to the right, pulled it up nicely at turn six and executed that manoeuvre. Took about half a K, but he got there. It was very, very nicely done. Let's join the podium now with Matt Nolte. It's time for the podium for race 12 of the Repco Supercars Championship at the Merlin Darwin Triple Crown. And in third place for RJ Batteries today, it's Nick Perkat. In second place for Monster Energy Racing is Cameron Waters. From our winning team, Walkinshaw Andretti United, here's Anthony McDonald. And presenting your Race 12 winner from Mobile One Appliances Online Racing, here's Chaz Mostert. 
Presenting the third place trophy today from National Critical Care and Trauma Response is Paul Campbell. <laughs> Presenting the second place trophy from our naming rights sponsor Merlin, here's Grant Emanuel. <laughs> Presenting the team's trophy, Larrakia artist Trent Lee. And presenting our winner's trophy here today, Honourable Natasha Files, Minister for Tourism and Hospitality. OK, Darwin, that is your race 12. Merlin, Darwin, triple crown podium. Let's fire up those champagne bottles. <laughs> uh, he was able to get many of those Walker Tour and Trinity United guys. It was Joe Sasso and Anthony McDonald, all those blokes there. They just got doused. Let's have a look at our Boost Mobile highlights because what a start. It was a disaster for this man, for Mark Winterbottom. He had an electrical problem. It turned the engine off. A bold move, an aggressive move down the inside. And Anton Di Pasquale will rue the day that he didn't cover that hole on the way down to turn one. Check this out. Bang! That was Todd Hazelwood. There were six cars heavily damaged. That was Winterbottom into Wink Cup. And finally, Winterbottom made contact heavily with the back of Anton. That's the reaction. He said it's a cruel sport. You're not wrong about that. Garth Tanner predicted earlier today that it was going to be some chaos. There's certainly chaos in this pit stop. Instead of a four second stop, it was 30 seconds for the benchmark team. That was cruel. Van Gisbergen was in the lead by about two and a half seconds at that point. Down the inside, some of his passes were exceptional. This one on Gary Jacobson just escorted him wide nicely. He then gets a double header down the inside of Heimgartner and then finds a way by David Reynolds at the next corner. He come from way back and was one for a boost mobile a thon. Whack Courtney into Kostecki off the road and rotated. But this man was able to prevail. Just signed a new multi-year agreement. This team's ecstatic. They've got some of the staff and the people they need to go well and they're getting better all the time.